play it on Xbox One. Hello and welcome to the Playground Games monthly stream. We are coming to you live from a very wet and windy Leamington Spa. Uh, I'm Mike Brown and I'm here today along with these guys to bring you all of the latest news from the Series 19 update to Forza Horizon 4. Uh, joining us on the sofa today is none other than Playground Games game designer, Matt Pickering. How are you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm good. How are you, Mike? I'm very good, thank you. What games have you been playing lately? Uh, I've been looking at Assassin's Creed Odyssey and uh, Need for Speed Heat as well. Need for Speed? <laughs> You've got to check them out, see what they're up to. <laughs> well, what are they up to? <laughs> uh, it's not my favourite in the series, I've got to admit. But uh, yeah, it's worth a look. Okay, all right, all right. Well, um, it's not worth a look for you guys. You haven't got to do that research, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Um, <laughs> next, next up is Car Handling Maestro, uh, Chris Phillips. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, not too bad yourself. Yeah, pretty good. What have you been playing lately? Uh, spin tires. Okay. Um, which is um, dry and wet at the same time. Dry and wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <laughs> And everyone's favourite level designer, it's Andy Baranowski. Oh, thanks, Mike. Hey, Andy, what have you been playing lately? Uh, I've been nerding out on iRacing, doing some proper sim racing. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it's been good, been getting competitive. It's, uh, yeah. So, addictive. all of you playing not Forza Horizon 4? Well, that goes without saying, isn't it? Oh, you know, okay, all right, come okay. On. Okay, uh, shall we take a look at what is coming up on today's show? All right, so first up, we have a brand new section called Cupidly Priced Cars. More about that in just a moment. We then have some very exciting brand new LEGO content for those of you who own the LEGO Speed Champions expansion. We'll then take a dig through the festival playlist. Uh, we'll have a look at all the new cars that are coming in this update. Uh, then we will have a special guest on the show for Liming Q&Ata. Uh, this was a new, a, new, a, new, a new section that we trialed last week, uh, last, sorry, last month, and it was so successful that we haven't cut it yet. So we will do it at least one more time. Uh, we'll then be jumping into a photo slideshow. Those of you who've submitted photos to us on Twitter and Instagram uh, will be showing off the very best of those. We will then take a, take a drive around the world in some of the brand new cars that are here this, this month. Uh, we'll then have another quick update on what new cars will be in Eliminator this month before doing a bit of housekeeping with the updates and fixes that are coming as well in this update. Right, so um, you saw that, that we have a section called Cupidly Priced Cars. That is because this Friday it is Valentine's Day and we thought we would celebrate by bringing you some very, very special deals. And when we bring you deals, we bring you none other than Mr. Tommy Bargains. Over to you, Tommy. Welcome to Cupidly Priced Cars, when the prices are hot but we're not. Who wrote that? Making me look a right mug. Anyway, Tommy's last sale blew up because a lot of you have been spending them Forsafon points. The Forsafon head office is looking bang tidy. Now, Tommy is always on the lookout for new business opportunities. And as Mrs B can attest to, Valentine's Day is a big deal in the Bargains household. To celebrate that special time between loved ones, Tommy's got three deals that's going to get your motor purring. If you're busy tonight, don't worry, all these deals will be coming back on Valentine's Day. And if you're not busy, get down the old Forzafon shop sharpish. First up, we have the Hot Wheels Twin Mill. For those young at heart, we've got a life-size 69 toy Twin Mill. With twin superchargers, so uh, you and your date can't see where you're going. But let's be honest, you'll be gazing into each other's eyes so much it don't matter. Now, since Toolbent isn't around, Tommy's got full control of these deals. None of this boring game design. What about the economy? Only the best prices for you. That's a Tommy guarantee. For the next 15 minutes, 200 Forza Fun points. Go. Back to you, Mike. Uh, thanks, Tommy. Uh, yes, so uh, if you're watching live, then you might want to build your Xbox on, on another screen, obviously. Don't turn us off uh, and jump into the Forza Fun shop and claim that car. If you're not watching live, then all these deals will be available across Valentine's Day. So you'll have a second chance to get them just then. Um, yes, so uh, very excited about this next section because uh, I think it's great that we're able to, to do this, really. Um, we're able to add a, an update to the LEGO Speed Champions expansion. Um, should we, should we take a look? Yeah, why not? Yeah, so it is a brand new uh, LEGO Speed Champions car. Oh, uh, yes, it is none other than the LEGO uh, Bugatti Chiron. Chris, do you want to tell us all about it? Yep, so it uh, follows the same ethos as all the other uh, Speed Champions we have in Forza Horizon 4. So we've built it as if underneath it there is a Bugatti Chiron, but it's, it's got the LEGO exterior on it, so it's still got that 1500 horsepower engine in it. Um, still all-wheel drive, still incredibly fast on a straight line. Um, but yeah, it looks like a Lego car and uh, drives. This one's actually a little bit different to the normal Bugatti because the dimensions just made it a bit weird. So uh, this one, uh, a little bit more understeer in it, um, just because it's, it's narrower, which gave some issues. 
Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's very much like all the other speed champions in that it's it's a big axe here on underneath it. Mm. So yeah, just just as fast, every, every bit as luxurious. Um, probably probably not quite as comfortable. Not in the, uh, <laughs> no, it might be a bit, bit, bit hard seats in it. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. But, what? Sorry, excuse my driving. <laughs> Almost two tons of Lego brick just uh, <laughs> coming to an abrupt halt there. Uh, I think one of the great features of this car, both the model, the model that you can purchase from Lego or the one that you can drive in this expansion, is that really cool tail light. Um, it's a, a really iconic part of the car, which Lego had to recreate using a red elastic band, which was incredibly ingenious. Yeah. Um, and the one we've got in game, as you can see there, is moving around. Um, we treated it like we do with all the other cars. If you'd scaled that up, you wouldn't expect it to be this really thin rubber band. It would have a bit of mass to it. It would, it would feel like a, like a large, heavy band. So it's got that kind of lower frequency movement to it. Yeah, and the uh, vehicle art guys put a lot of thought into the way that it illuminates as well mm. as, as a sort of rubber band. I think that's a, it's a really nice effect that they've achieved with it as well. So it's really cool. Yeah. and. Matt, of course, we didn't just want to we just want, we just want to throw the car in there. Absolutely. We need to make sure it was well supported with lots of fresh gameplay for players to take part in. So, what can people do in the? That's uh, right. Start? Yeah, we wanted to welcome the showroom to the game with uh, some content to enjoy. So, uh, I've driven over to an, a new event that has appeared in Lego Valley. I'll show you where it is on the map. So, this is how you get the car. Um, if you've completed the initial drive of the Lego expansion and you've got as far as the Master Builder's house then this event will have unlocked and appeared on the map so it's right here in the north uh, east corner and uh, you'll even if you don't have the car yet you'll drive it in this event uh, against the real thing in a head-to-head -head, just like the other Speed Champions events and if you win it you get to keep it so do you want to play it should we show it off let's let's do it yeah. all right let's go We've got two to choose from <laughs> We may have done this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, 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 Tommy, it's Tommy Bargains. <laughs> it's, he's just made an image of him. So there it is, the real thing. We're going to do this head to head. I see what you mean about it being slightly narrower than the, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> than the real world example. So uh, level design extraordinaire, Andy. Feel free to commentate throughout the race, <laughs> call, call out all okay. of the. Uh, the really, we'll, really we'll deep level find. design is going on here. Right, so we start off on a road. That's a great level design uh, <laughs> thing. <laughs> I hope you can do as, more. As, yeah. as do many races. Many great races have started on roads. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No. So good call, good call out. As well. the, the Speed Champions pack was, uh, was great fun to design. We, we got to sort of really let loose with it, as, as we did with uh, Fortune Island as well. But um, yeah, it's a nice uh, fast flowing A road around the outside. See if you can keep it pinned all the way around this, uh, this long corner. Handles really well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great route for this one. It's got loads of like nice, gentle, sweeping corners so you can really keep the speed up. Yeah. That's al always a challenge with the, with the level design, right? To try and keep the player on edge and entertained, but also make it accessible for as many people as possible. Mm. So. Yeah, so you can just about see as well one of the other cool features of the Lego version of this car uh, that the engine is actually made out of. Um, Lightsaber hilts. So uh, <laughs> just those, those little grey bits in the back there, or a couple of. Uh, yeah. So you're saying Bugatti didn't use them on the real thing? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not the car expert. That would have to be a question. I have to, I have to throw back at you guys. I'm not sure um, how much horsepower a lightsaber can yield. But <laughs> it's quite a lot. <laughs> many, <I think>. many <laughs> yeah. horsepowers. We'll find, maybe one day we'll find out. But yeah, like we were saying about the elastic bands uh, and about the other Speed Champions cars as well. Lego really pulled out all the stops and used them in very ingenious ways. Like we were talking about the center earlier on, and how it uses those spear tips as um, brake lights, and then and then the Chiron has the elastic band. Yeah, the, the, the Chiron uh, is a particularly difficult car to recreate with the medium of Lego, just because it has so many like iconic sweeping yeah. curves. Uh, the whole like C shape of yeah, the they've side. Done, we were talking about this earlier. They've done such a great job. Like they've managed to use the bricks to get the bottom bit, and then carry it round the canopy with a sticker. And it really, yeah, it captures that key design of it. Oh, I've left him for dust. So there we go. Easy. Owned it. Um, yeah. So that is what you would have to do at home if you wanted to unlock this car. And as Matt's just ably demonstrated, um, 
it's not too difficult. To do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you'll probably be able to do that. Uh, yeah, this that, is that is not all. We've got more content for you to enjoy as well. We have a monthly rivals event where you can drive this car. Even if you don't own the uh, the Lego expansion, mm -hmm. you can try out the Lego Chiron in that event. And we've got a weekly Forza-thon as well, where you can drive either the Lego or the real car if you don't own the expansion. Uh, so some challenges for you to complete there. And then last but not least, we've got a new uh, seasonal championship, which will appear in autumn. Uh, and you can use any of the Lego cars in that, including the show. Great. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is available to everybody who owns uh, LEGO Speed Champions. And if you don't own LEGO Speed Champions, you can purchase it for, I think, $19.99 and about £15.63 uh, exchange rates. Um, <laughs> you can also get it if you own the Ultimate Edition or you own the Expansion Pass. Any, any way that you can get hold of this pack, you'll get this car more or less as soon as you start it. Um, right, do you want to drive us back to the house and we'll uh, yeah, jump yeah. on to the next bit? If that's it, I'll, uh, I'll just jump us back. <laughs> I'm sure those guys didn't want to see the car driving, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, um, yeah, so once we are in the house, we can jump into the festival playlist and give these guys uh, a yeah, they first look at the, 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 the Series 19 new cars. And there's some, uh, some pretty exciting numbers in this one. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we've got to remember where to go. Yeah. Festival playlist. So, uh, so I'll jump, jump back to back summer. summer. Yeah. <clears throat> so a car I'm really excited to see, um, Lexus returns okay. uh, along with Toyota. So we've got the Lexus LFA, uh, completely bespoke supercar there, for fifty percent completion in summer, alongside the Porsche nine one seven, the long tail in its psychedelic livery, which is also mm. very cool. And um, also in summer, our other new and exclusive car is the Rover SD one. So you'll be able to get that from this championship. It's never over with a Rover. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> Awesome yeah. gives you the chance to get the 488 Pista. <coughs> Again, I know a lot of people have been requesting that. So There's a new, uh, new Fox Line Weekly as well. That's right. This is the one I mentioned a moment ago. So um, you'll be able to complete this with either the real or the Lego Bugatti Chiron. We've got some uh, events for you to do here. And we also have a new showcase remix, the Pillar of Autumn, paying homage, of course, to the, the, the ship in Combat of Old. Um, the Pillar of Awesome. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. And um, you can see where the design team get their bad puns from. <laughs> Lead by example. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, the monthly rivals event there uh, with the with the Lego Chiron. Then in winter, our next car is the Aston Martin Vulcan uh, AMR Pro. So that's an uh, extreme upgrade package that you can get for a Vulcan if you are an owner of such an amazing car. And as usual, we'll be doing a deep dive into all of these uh, soon. And then we've also got the Ford Supervan 3 in a championship called Is It a Bird, Is It a Plane? So there you go. That's, uh, that's our, all of our exclusive cars. And then in spring, you can pick up the Porsche 356 SL, Lotus Elise 99. You can join the, the Dino gang if you haven't already by winning it from that trial. And um, there you go. That's a festival playlist in a nutshell. All right. And just for anyone who's just, uh, just, for anyone who's just tuning in, do you just want to... Um Quickly show us where those cars are again, just as, a, as an right. update. So just just the new cars. So we got the uh, the Lexus. Yep, fifty percent completion on summer. The uh, Rover SD1 in this championship right here. Then in autumn we've got uh, the Fortsalon Weekly featuring the Chiron, a new showcase remix, Pillar of Autumn. Then in winter the Aston Mar Martin Vulcan AMR Pro, the uh, Ford Supervan 3, and uh, that's it for all of our new and exclusive cars. All right, all right. Let's take the uh, Sharon out for a quick spin again. Um, it's, it's not not quite time to throw for Tommy Bargain's hot <laughs> dude just yet. So, all right. I love what they do with the lights on these as well, where the uh, sticker, the, model, the model is a sticker yeah, yeah. and it just has like a a very authentic <laughs> looking glow. Right. Where are you going to go? I don't know, what should we do? Should I, we take I think on we one of the... Um, I think you got to do speed, speed. Speed zone is... Yeah, yeah. Speed zone is speed zone. Right, I was going to take it with one of those turbo boost ramps. That definitely needs to happen yeah. as well. I'm sure we'll find one en route somewhere. So did you say there's a new uh, signal championship in the LEGO expansion? There is indeed, in autumn. So it should be on the map right now, actually. So have a look. I need to remember where it starts. Uh, yeah, it's this one. LEGO Speed Champions Cup. Okay. So... Um, 
as you can see there, car restrictions, 998, LEGO Speed Champions. It's really cool to see the whole gang uh, in that championship, the whole LEGO gang there together. It's really fun, so uh, make sure you check that one out. You can grab a super wheel spin if you win that one. Cool. So all five LEGO cars in there? Yeah. Yeah. Probably about the best chance if you're in a Chiron, to be fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, I take it back about what I said with, with my driving earlier. This, this controller's dead zone is like all over the place. Yeah, you know what they say about bad workmen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting my excuses out there, you know, you know. Racing driver. You're absolutely nailing this drift zone, Matt. I thought we were looking for a speed zone. You are nailing zone. it. <laughs> All right, I'll drift it, sure. Drifted off, off, the, uh, off the road there. Um, there we go, here's a speed zone. All right, down, that was down. People expect nothing less than three stars. <laughs> that, was that was a lot of break. <laughs> should have um, took a bit more of a running start, I think. At least you can put this one downhill. Whoa. Oh, don't run too wide. How was that? I'd say that wasn't a bad effort. See what I mean about the dead zone? <laughs> <laughs> Just pull into the right there. Man. Love smashing through all the stuff, it's so cool. One of the things I love on the, this year as well is the, the Via Clark guys. Um, obviously, we've all put the, the cars together and we know which bricks can fit in which direction. So, if you look at the, the bonnet on the car, um, the Lego uh, word on the, the, the two by twos on the front is, the other, uh, is flipped as if you'd oh, built yeah. it yourself and hadn't really uh, looked at where you, like, what orientation you're putting that one in. So people are just not really paying real attention to detail in the building the model, I think. Because yeah. obviously real LEGO pros make sure all those <laughs> oh, LEGO, yeah. LEGO, LEGO, LEGO logos like are that. aligned. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> it goes together as quickly as, as possible. I just love the attention to detail. Like we were saying before about the, the curb on the roof where it meets the door. Just to look exactly like you know, a real thing. <laughs> all right, so uh, if you're watching this live, then you're just about out of time to go and claim your Hot Wheels Twin Mill in the Fultzton shop. But that does mean that it is time once again for us to throw over to the living legend that is Mr. Tommy Bargains. Over to you, Tommy. Ferraris are red, Bugattis are blue. Has Tommy got a bargain for you? Welcome back to Cupidly Priced Cars. Tommy Bargains here with a deal that's the cat's pajamas. Now, Back in the day, me and Mrs. B would drive one of these up to Glen Rannock at sunset. Tommy would put the old Barry W on and... This is, this is a new one. The Beetle, you wanted the Beetle. I wanted the love bug, you donut. S sorry about that, I've taken on some new stuff and well, no, no one does it like Tommy does. Anyway, this VW Rallycross Beetle comes with all mod cons, dab radio, heated seats, leather interior, beautiful. It's yours for just 154 fun points. And I know what you're thinking, Tommy, how can you be making anything with these deals? And to you, I say, trust Tommy, okay? I'm Tommy Bargains, you've got 15 minutes. Back to you, Mike. Uh, incredible. So, uh, as we mentioned at the start of the show, it is our second ever uh, episode of Elimin q and and we've got a very special guest joining us on the chair right now. It's none other than Playground Games' favourite producer, it's Mr. Tom Butcher. Hello, hey, Tom. Nice to <laughs> Ah, and we're, we're and jumping we're, straight in. Jumping straight in, yeah. So, perfect, yeah. perfect. I, mean, I, could, I know you've just been chill, chilling out over there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's weird how I never see you and, you and the bargains in the same place at the same a time. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. Um, he's just an elusive guy, I guess. And, you know, I've never seen him myself, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, he's, maybe he's gone on the phone to, to, to Mrs. Bargains. Uh, right, so you're, you're straight in. You are uh, yes. already already playing eliminated. Don't you dare get eliminated right at the start. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. um, right, so Elimin q &A, I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to play Eliminator. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. So, Tom, you're a producer. I am. What, what, what is a producer? Uh, I, yeah, I wake up in the morning thinking that very same thing. Um, <laughs> We're, we're the glue that holds the, holds the team together. You know, without us, it's just a load of loose bits, and uh, that's what I tell myself anyway. Right, okay. Right, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think it's weird that out of 
basically everyone in the entire company, producers are the only like job that doesn't actually really produce anything. That, that's a great point, yeah. Uh, that's something I'll, I'll definitely ponder when I try and go to sleep at night, wondering about my, uh, my self-worth, yeah. Okay. So uh, last month we had a different producer on. We had Gareth, didn't we? We did. Um, yeah. And we talked a lot about right. Gareth's. Um, Gareth, talked a lot about Gareth's weird lists. Yeah. Do, do you have any any weird Very lists? Very strange. Uh, I, I don't. I have I have one, a list of one of um, people with a bad list of their best games, and that's Gareth on that list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's without. A nightmare. Look. Oh, it's just teasing you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so without uh, the means of a. A list that I can tease you about and dial further. I'm going to jump yep. into your gaming history. Okay. Can you tell me the very first game you ever played? I think it was Scooby Doo on the Spectrum. Scooby Doo on the Spectrum. That is not <laughs> a game I'm familiar with. No, it's I not. Can I can imagine. It. It. I can picture it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it had um, it had all the gang, Shaggy, and uh, you know the other, the other ones. ones. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, 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 Fred was yeah, there. Yeah. Um, Velma. Yes, Thelma was there. Daphne as well. Uh, sure. Was Scrappy doing it? No, no, no. He did <laughs> not non, make the cut. Non-canon non Scrappy do. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, tell me about experience. Then. How, how old? How old was Little Tom when he was um, playing Scooby Doo? Uh, I don't. I, uh, I guess about eight or nine. Maybe. Oh, maybe you, were, you were nine when you first played a video game. Maybe it was earlier. It was. It's a very hazy time in my life. We had basically we had a spectrum with like a big plastic tub of uh, tapes, and you know it's a bit of a lottery whether Amazing. it worked or not. This, this guy's guy, going to challenge you. you. He's hunting you. He is in a. You're not getting out of this that easy. But is yeah. that yeah. a uh, head for the lake? Oh dear. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, he's got oh one of those uh, heavy hitters oh. from last month's theme. Oh, now's Tommy's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, what was the first game you ever purchased uh, with your own money? Uh, the first game I ever purchased was, this is going to be a very short session, uh, well, Limit, <laughs> Limit Q&A, uh, Chirok Dinosaur Hunter on the N64. Oh, has he hit or something? is it a tree? Has I don't think that matters. <laughs> Not in that car. <laughs> Come on, Tom, keep going. You've, sorry, it's Ch Chirok Dinosaur Hunter. Yep, 70 oh. English pounds. God, money um, bags. 70? Yeah, yeah. 7 zero, yep. At a, at a time in the 90s when 70 English pounds could have bought you, well, probably a mini like this. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or a small terraced house. Um. <laughs> a small northern terraced house. Oh, no, yeah. God. He's upside down. He's upside down. You've got oh, him. Oh, dear. That's uh, Final Fantasy for you. Um. <laughs> there is still over a mile left. But this guy seems like a pro. Oh, he's, he's off. He's off. But he's already crashed twice. I think you've got every chance here. Yeah, he's... Oh, he's, he's He's taking the riverbed. He's Which side of the road is the uh, yeah, is the finish it? point? Then? Um, oh, so I'm just going to stick to the road. So first game ever, Scooby. First game you purchased, Turok. Yeah. What is your uh, favourite game of all time? Do not get that track off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favourite game of all time, it probably has to be uh, Dota. I'm oh, regretful to say. Oh, no. And you are using, uh, I guess, Hours played as the metric to determine what you what is that your is quite, favorite game. That's quite correct. Yeah. Um, is that so you can justify it to yourself all of the uh, <laughs> the, 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 the time you've wasted that could have spent with your. Uh, oh online. my gosh! <laughs> it's just like fighting. No! No, Minnie! No! Well, Butcher. Uh, you're gonna have to play again because we've got ten minutes till the next section. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the clock tonight. <laughs> um, right. Well, just thankfully, there's a there's a very easily accessible play again button, which you know. Great you design. Jump great straight design. Back into I don't know an who, don't know who put that there. Do that. did that. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. Um, okay. So. Um, why don't you give us a bit of a, uh, a Tom Butcher backstory? What, what was your life before Playground Games? My life before Playground Games. Uh, so I did two stints at Codemasters. Nice. Um, yep, yep, went back a second time. Uh, and in between that, I was at uh, Full Fat, uh, which is a... Uh, no one's heard of them. They're, they're a mobile, mobile studio in, in Warwick. Uh, no? <laughs> See a lot of, a lot of blank faces. Um, yeah, I was there and I was a designer there and then turned into producer because there wasn't a producer and um, yeah, then went back to Codemasters and then came here, found you, my way. You worked on such semi-classics as 
the Goblet of Fire on uh, and they, Nintendo DS? Not so. Goblet of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deathly Hallows Part 1 and so, 2 so, on the DS. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Oh, is that the Gears of Wands one? The, the uh, in, no, that was the uh, console, oh. version. <laughs> console version, <laughs> which we, um, we had a high Metacritic, just for now. Uh, <laughs> like very that. important. But <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know how much I care about Metacritic. <laughs> 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 I'm not agreeing that it's very important. Um, um, I'm going to get into that track tour. Yes, it's a good idea. Now, now is the perfect time to get into track tour, yeah. like when you were losing that headset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, OK, uh, that's a nice whistle stop tour of uh, Tom's professional background. What was the uh, first car you ever owned? Uh, first car I ever owned was actually a Mini, weirdly. Was it? Yeah. An actual Mini? A, yeah. A proper, really? Classic, yeah. Wow. Classic mini. That is a great first car. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, you like? It, it was great, yeah. Had little, like, well, four gears, had a little, like, walnut dash with a little glove box in it. And, what year yeah. was it? Uh, I don't know. Did it, did it cost person? you more or less than Churok Dinosaur and so on? It it cost uh, yeah a equivalent amount I think. I'm going I'm going straight into the Volvo. Sorry, yeah, there, Top Gear. There was that um, there was that spell wasn't there throughout the nineties where you could just get a mini for about two hundred quid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't much. I'll be honest. I'm guessing um, you never crashed it as well. Uh, well, it, still I was going to ask if you crashed it into a tree at all. I didn't crash it, but it did get written off while I was <laughs> driving it. Um, oh. we... <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, hear me out, hear me out. So uh, we were driving behind a lorry, and it had like a load of uh, breeze blocks on it. Uh, not very fast, and a breeze block fell off the back of it, and we... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's final destination. No, 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 no. So we went straight over the top of it, and it just like tore the bottom out. Yeah, yeah it was pretty... Eviscerated well, the mini. That wow. could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it I, I don't want to call it lucky because it completely <laughs> destroyed your car, but you yeah. didn't die. It so could have. We'll call that a victory. Yeah, could, I was hoping it'd be like the Flintstones where the bottom would drop out and we just <laughs> <laughs> carry, on, carry on running. <laughs> do, you, do you have some sort of deal with Hanna Barbera? <laughs> <you're trying laughs> like? Shout out to the Flintstones and Jetsons. <laughs> Great cartoons. Um, yeah. So how are you doing anyway? What is the uh, what is the strat at the moment? Uh, so the strat at the moment is. Uh, hopefully get a better car than this, uh, the Volvo. Um, oh, here's someone. I'm probably just going to challenge this guy. Nice. <laughs> Maybe. Uh... That's, you see, one Wait. of the tactics is oh. stopping yourself very quickly. You can just drive into <laughs> solid objects. Oh, it's a mini. You got to get them before they get, get out there. Are you, as soon as I'm just going to wait until he pops out, and then I'm going to challenge him. Oh, that's scummy tactics. Yep. Yes, it is. Um, so, what is your so? It may well be the same answer, but what is the uh, favourite car you've ever owned? Uh, favourite car I've ever owned is probably that Mini, as sad as it is to say. That's, um, that's, that's fair. I, n I never knew you were, uh, you, you were a Mini at the time. I, <laughs> um, I, yeah, um, and I, I won't ever drive a cool car anymore because I have two children. <laughs> <laughs> but what car do you drive right now? Um, a car that can't fit those two children, isn't it? Uh, no, oh, well, yeah, OK. Um, a Mazda MX-5. Yeah. But, may, but I also drive a Kia Sportage. Shout out to Kia. Great, great <laughs> selling <of> green cars. <laughs> we get a lot of requests to put Kia, Kia Sportage in the game, actually. Oh, really? No. Is it just um, you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are you going to lose one. this again? I am. It, it, I didn't get you, the you, drop on him as much as I was hoping. Yeah, no, you, went you, actually, you, you went the wrong way. And, and I, I like that you waited for him to pick up the GTR rather than challenging the but, Mini as well. But, 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 I think this is in the... Mortimer Gardens, right. which is a bit of a, um, a crapshoot. Can I say that? No. Uh, it's a bit of a gamble. <laughs> it's a bit of a gamble. We'll bleep that out, right, guys? <laughs> um, it's, it's a bit of a gamble. So. I hope it's a gamble. It depends right there in front of you. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's just gone over. terribly. This has gone really badly. I'm going to hit that. No. Oh, it. go on. <gasps> oh, he's got it. Oh. He's gone for, has he gone for loot? No, he's just trying to touch the trees. You got him, oh. Butcher. Oh. What a gift. <laughs> So what I did there, I got the drop on him, <laughs> <laughs> took him right to the finish, made him think he'd had it, and then Perfect strategy. Yeah. Perfect strategy. Totally False right confidence. Got that yeah. All right, this could be a win. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How long? How long we got? <laughs> Four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You definitely do make every race exciting, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, see what that loot is. Don't be. No, no, I'm going, going for this guy. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oh, this oh, is not oh. good for him. Sorry, you should, you Sable Mushroom 04. Shout out to Sable Mushroom. <laughs> is that someone you're friendly with? It's my sponsor. Sponsor. All right.
right, so um, do you want to tell us uh, what is your, your greatest, your proudest achievement at the time you've been at Playground Games? Uh, my proudest achievement is probably, uh, so I do, uh, as producer, I, um, I own the production of our live ops, our post-release um, program. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's fair to say uh, we've been putting out so much free stuff for people. Yeah, and, it is, um, this is the 19th update. Yeah, uh, the 19th. Oh, the, oh, oh, there. There. Sorry, he's, he's mouse blind. Yeah, um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's, super, it's super exciting whenever... Normally when you're working on a game, you're working on for two, three years, uh, and so you don't get any... Please win this head um, you don't get any you, you don't get any feedback from players until until the game comes out. Mm. Um, what's really cool about what we do at the moment with Horizon 4 is you're constantly getting feedback, um, good and bad. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just cool to be able to work on something, put it out there, see how people uh, engage with it, and um, get their feedback and comments, and then. Um, yeah, then work on the next thing straight away. So yeah, I think that's that's been super rewarding. Great. So I've beaten my opponent. He quit, didn't he? He knew it was. He, he, knew, he knew the rhyme was on the wall. Um, oh, 2017. That's nice. Yes. Um, that is nice. So you could say that uh, all the people watching this, they appreciate all that content. They have they have you to thank for that, and they should all reach out to you on social media at is it at freelance police? Is that your <laughs> freelance uh, p? Yeah. Freelance p at freelance p. So you give it at, at freelance p on Twitter and just say. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Been good, good work. Yeah. Shout out to Freelance P. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you choose the head-to-head -head against the Warthog? Um, I, because I thought I had a chance. Or did he choose you? No, I, I saw Tom clicking. Oh dear. That's that's. I, I was clicking. That's was, poor, poor game strategy. I put it this way: I don't think the bookies will be paying out. Uh, <laughs> they might, think, they might suspect foul play, um, taking a dive, for instance. Hey, this is not over yet. But the, war the Warthog is, you know, it's phenomenal off-road, yeah, really Phenomenal off-road, really, really stable, never flips. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's completely over. It's over, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or is Tom time managing it, even whilst he's playing the game? He's being a producer. Right, uh, well, right. that's it. Um, you, you were rubbish. Thanks, um, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank, <laughs> that, thanks very much, Tom. That is, that is Tom banished from the, sh the show, as everyone who comes on a limb and Q&Ator, once they lose, uh, they are banned from the show forever. You will never, ever see his face ever again. He is... He, <laughs> he is toast. Anyway, uh, we're, we're now going to throw back over to Tommy Bargains. Tommy Bargains, over to you. Ah, hello, it's your old pal, Tommy. Whoa, that 84 Rover SD1. Now, I'm not promising anything as this is a brand new motor on our forecourt, but we'll see what we can do. Somewhere down the line, Tommy's not promising things, but that's gonna do numbers, let me tell you. Right, because Tommy's an old romantic at heart, we've got one more special deal for you. Now, it's got a PO next to the name, which I think means pre-owned, but don't let that put you off. I like to say previously love. Uh, this is a proper nice motor, not much on the clock, and I'm told the previous owner only used it to, to go and collect bonus boards, get, get to the shops on a Sunday, that sort of thing. Right. This is the 2017 Ford Focus RSPO. Now, I, I know you're interested. Tommy's seen that look before a thousand times there. And I don't do this for everyone, right? But whatever you do, don't tell Dorban. He, he can't know absolutely off limits but you take this car away tonight and I'll throw in the floor mats gratis black fabric seats chrome finish electric windows and Bluetooth I'm killing my bottom line with this but we've pulled out all the stops 500 force on points and you've got me over a barrel uh, it, oh, no. who the blazes is Torben hello stupidly priced cars what? Uh, listen, mate, you put me in charge. Uh, uh, gotta go. You're breaking up, mate. Right, uh, you've, you've got till the end of the show. Check the internet for the Valentine's Day sale. Tommy loves you. 
Uh, thanks, Tommy. Uh, so, yes, as he says, you've got until the end of the show tonight to jump over, insert Forza Horizon 4, go into the Fordston shop and grab yourselves the pre-order edition of the 2017 Ford Focus. Uh, if you miss it today, you're not watching this live, then you'll have another chance on Valentine's Day to grab that car. Um, we're now going to jump over and queue up the photo slideshow. So this is, uh, you guys have been reaching out to us on Twitter and Instagram, giving us your very best photos taken within the game, which uh, show off this month's theme, which is romance. Let's take a look. Welcome back, and there were some amazing photos in there. So thank you so much for sending those in. Guys, a, do you want to pick out a favorite? Mine was the first one with the snowman, I think. Yeah, yeah. with Matt as well. That yeah, brilliant. and that was a, it was a really nice picture as well. I think it was with an old MG uh, with the load of pink flowers in it. It was really nicely, uh, nicely shot. Great. Sorry, um, I can think of the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we take a look at the new cars that are coming in the Series 19 update? Yeah, sounds good. And right. while I was on my travels, I got a new controller, so I can ah. actually drive them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better be able to this time, otherwise... You know, <laughs> no no more excuses. Reputation so, is at stake. Uh, some people might have missed it earlier on the show. They might have only been joining partway through. So let's uh, run through these for anyone who has missed it. Right, so 50% completion in Festival Playlist was uh, the Lexus uh, LFA. Amazing. That Lexus is back, yep. and then in a seasonal championship, also in summer, we had It's Never Over with the Rover, the uh, SD1, and then in winter, for 50% completion of Festival Playlist, we had the Aston Martin Vulcan AMR Pro, and in a championship that same week in winter, the uh, Ford Supervan 3. Which one should we look at first, Mike? Um, well, I think you've got to... We should, we should always start with the very best, so let's go for the Rover. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's a good chance for us all to have a little bit of a nerd out on this. Yeah. I think. I think we were, uh, we, yeah, we, a lot of people I think go oh, I'm a rover, but it's actually got a, a lot of history to it, hasn't it? This yep. car. Right. How long have you got? Twenty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> well, go ahead. Go and tell, tell us yeah. about the car, guys. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, kind of ro rovers foray into fast saloons. Um, you were saying it was actually quite um, quite forward thinking for for when it was released. And it was penned by the same man that did the Ferrari 365 Daytona? Uh, no, it was uh, influenced heavily by the 365 oh. Daytona. The guy... Um, did, uh, did he use a piece of tracing of... paper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you can definitely see the influence on it, the, the, sort of front, the slanty yeah. nose yeah, on, on the front of it with that. But uh, he, he was also responsible for a lot of the design work on the, on the Range Rover as well, and you can, you can definitely see that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really... Um, advanced design for its time. A lot of the materials when they designed it inside was meant to make it feel very futuristic. Uh, Matt, you, you had an interesting fact about the dashboard as well. Oh yeah, this, uh, this design <laughs> that you see here is easily um, made left or right hand drive. Um, yeah, so it's like a, a whole binnacle that they could just yes, shift right, from one yeah. side to the other. Um, it, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really clever. The fact, that even the fact it was, it was a hatchback for the, the boot or tailgate opening, depending where you're from. Um, yeah, that, like, that was quite uncommon at the time. A lot of the cars were either saloons or station wagons, and they decided that rover owners of the future wanted a hatchback. And, and so that was that. Um, and, and yeah, in a lot of ways, uh, it sadly didn't quite live up to the quality of the design and how good a car it was. Yeah, I think with it being from British Leylands, they had a reputation for lorries and trucks and buses and things at the time. They wanted to step into the executive car market and I think they turned internally to Triumph and Rover. This yeah. is the same controller. 
<laughs> um, is it? Is it? Really? Yeah, so he was just like driving off into a field while I wasn't looking there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, yeah, they, they they had an internal competition, uh, and uh, they went with the rover design and gave it to their specialist division, hence the name SD1, first project from the uh, specialist division. Um, and it was also 1970s, 1980s Britain at the time. So although there were huge waiting lists for the car, because it 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 was really impressive to journalists and the public alike, huge waiting lists started to form, but. Um, yeah, strikes and production line issues just meant that they never met the demand for the car and the cars they did build had some quality issues. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's still a, a three and a half litre V8 rear wheel drive, like like you say, British performance saloon. Yeah, so it's a Buick engine, right? It's a Buick, well, yeah, it started off life as a Buick engine and famously the Rover V8 ran from like 60s, 70s all the way through to the early 2000s, one of the longest productions of an engine. Um, but it also went on to actually be quite successful in uh, British touring cars as well. Um, yeah, V8. Right. Um, but it was back in the era where it was still a mix between, say, old minis and, and things like the Rover SD1. Yeah, it has sort of really become a, an icon of, uh, of Britain as well. Like, you think of all the sort of police chases mm. and getaways mm. on TV and films over the years that you've seen. Yeah, uh, also starred in uh, Don't You Want Me Baby by the Human <laughs> yeah. League, the music video. There you go. I think, I think we may have done all of our right, right uh, yeah. and, that, and that is and that is the point where it's time to move on. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this car is available in summer in the It's Never Over with a Rover uh, Championship. What car should we look at next, Chris? Should we jump your choice? into uh, another British legend, the Vulcan AMR Let's do Pro. It. An absolutely amazing colour. So uh, the Vulcan we are already having the game. Um, there's only 24 of them in the real world. And if you're one of the people that owns one of those 24 cars, you can upgrade it to the AMR Pro package. Mm -hmm. So that's going to add 25% more downforce to your car. Um, horsepower stays the same. It's five kilos lighter, I believe. Um, and it's just absolutely bonkers performance. How uh, much does that package cost? I don't think anybody if, actually knows. If you have to ask, you can't afford yeah. it. <laughs> no, it's, it's not public knowledge, I don't think. Does that, just, does that just remove you from the list, does it? Yeah, it's yeah they, they come and take the Vulcan <laughs> off of you. <laughs> so it produces something like 20% more downforce, doesn't it? Over yeah, I think it's 25% more, but um, the really astonishing figure is it produces more than Aston Martin's uh, Vantage GTE car, so their actual race car. Uh, it's oh, ma wow. making more downforce than that. Yeah, yeah. it's quite pronounced, the, the visual differences as well. Like the, uh, the front bumper, you can see that it's got the big uh, dive planes on it. Yeah. And, does the icon Twitter. on that yellow button look like uh, ice cream sundae to anybody else? Oh, do you? Yeah, that's your ice cream sundae dispenser. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Essential on a it, might, yeah. it might, might be a radio, but we'll go with uh, ice cream sundaes. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't a thing, it should be, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, if you yeah. need Kimmy your, your track car. car to be yeah, even more be. ridiculous, then this is the upgrade package. That you and can and who doesn't? When you're buying a track car, you want the most ridiculous version of it. Yeah. I, I imagine the uptake on this version of it would have been pretty high because if you're already in that very small yeah. group of people who is able to purchase this car in the first place, you probably yeah, get Yeah, like Chris says, money's, yeah. money's no object, right? So you just go for it. Yeah, yeah. it's made by the Q branch, Q division. They do like the bespoke Aston Martin stuff. Mm. Yeah, very cool. definitely playing into a little uh, franchise tie up there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty much as fast you can go. On a, in a private track day car, not a race Probably car. Probably nine Britain because it's too loud for no. the noise regs. Very true. <laughs> yeah. It does sound absolutely phenomenal yeah. as well. Yeah. So the seven litre V12 and this is one of the most special yeah. engines ever made, I think. Mm. Great, and that is available for completing 50% of the festival playlist in winter. That's right. All right, should we uh, take a look at the van? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another piece of legendary British engineering. Yeah. This, is, this is also a car that I've been trying to get into the game for a long time, all the way back to I think H2 I started trying to get it into the game. We, we were luckily, so Ford down at Dagenham have a secret collection of some of their past cars. Mm. Uh, we got access to that, and this is one of the cars we, we sourced, um, luckily. Um, when so you say we, was it one of you two that went down Unfortunately not, no, it was uh, one of our sourcing <laughs> team. Um, um, they had a very special day, because I've, I've seen what that collection has in it, and there's some incredible cars in there, and some, some more that are going to be coming in uh, the next few series as well, actually. 
Cool. Um, so th this car was built to celebrate the launch of the uh, Mark III Transit. Yeah. Um, it's actually built on top of the Superman II, um, but with the, the Mark III body um, in 7 8 scale. Um, powering it used to be a Cosworth HB Formula One engine, but in recent years Ford have taken that out to put a more usable uh, 3 litre V6 in it so that press can drive it and your, your everyday person rather than Formula One drivers. Um, that's the version we've got because the car we source is the car we build and that's that's what it currently is um, So we stay true to that, but there are engine swaps to put the the classic uh, racing v12 in it and the the racing v8 as well So you can still give it the, the f1 power levels um, So you were talking about the, the seating position before weren't you? Yeah, so you you'd think this is to make it central and more race car It's actually because when you open the door There's a air vent that goes straight into the back where the engine is so they've moved the driver couple of feet just to get some air into the back of the car. Um, it's also a really strangely letterbox sort of view that you get out of it. Mm, if you've yeah. ever like sat in a van and how high up and how good your visibility is, it's really strange to... I can't even imagine huh. what this would be like to drive. Like a transit van you drive like this. Like try yeah. driving like a 700 horsepower F1 powered <laughs> car like that. It just, it just it would be very odd. Yeah, is there much storage imagine. space in the back? Can you fit your tools in there? No, oh. there's, there's a 3 litre V6 in the back. Yeah. So it's probably a small toolkit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this classic Ford red, uh, sorry, blue and, and white livery as well. It's super yeah. 90s, isn't it? Yeah, That's exactly. Really cool. And uh, I think it, at one point in its life, it was painted as a, as a Royal Mail van. Yeah, it did a brief stint uh, doing press work for, for Royal Mail. <laughs> so. Amazing. Well, there's, there's the challenge for the livery creators. So this yeah. car will be so available on... Uh, in 10 minutes time, time, they'll be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the update doesn't go live just yet, does it? So I suppose for livery creators, that car will be available as soon as the patch goes yeah. live, right? You'll be able to jump in there, uh, inside the livery tool anyway. You're going to have to be able to drive it for a little while after that because it's not available until winter uh, in the Is It A Bird, Is It A Plane, No, It's Super Van uh, Championship. <laughs> um, so... That's right. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, uh, right, and we've got one we, more. Should we, we finally jump into the, the car I think everyone's waiting to see, which is the amazing LFA. You get to cars in such a strange way, Matt. Why? How do you do it? Just let, me, let, me just, let me just give you a pro strat, right? Just, uh, so you, pull, you, you drive in, you drive yeah. in, you pause the game, and you'll notice that one down is a change car, and you can just jump into there. Yeah, that's, and, uh, uh, that's it. <laughs> you do what I do. I always <laughs> tab all the way along to the end. You know, <laughs> it's because I usually go to the car collection screen. I'm usually working in that area, so I'm just just have it. Just, it's okay, it's okay. We can't all be experts okay. at the game. It's fine. <laughs> just, um, all right, you can drive it then, Mike. <laughs> cool. So I guess the long-awaited Lexus LFA. It's cool. We've got the uh, Active Aero up already. Oh, Chris, sorry. you had some really good facts about the uh, the dials in this one, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so it was one of the first cars to use an LCD uh, display and Lexus's reason for it was the engine can rev so quickly because it has such a lack of inertia that it um, was outpacing the analog gauges so they had to move to something more digital that could actually keep up with the way it was revving. Um, it's really cool the way it's got the, the stages of illumination so it's just white when you're revving normally and then you get towards the optimum shift point and it goes green and then you over rev it and it goes red and if you've seen that in a real one, you'd probably be slightly worried, yeah. wouldn't you? But it's, uh, it's a very high revving engine. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. It's, a, it's also a very different v V10 to things like the Lamborghini and the Audi V10. Um, very different sound, which I think our audio guys have done a great, great, great job capturing. In fact, it's the, the audio asset is a Lexus LFA, um, especially worked up for this car, and it really captures the, the kind of the raw character of that V10. Yeah, so a completely bespoke car. The engine, everything not shared with any other Toyota yep. or Lexus, they made it specially for this car as like an engineering exercise. Yeah. And it led to the car being quite expensive, but also like no compromise for the driving experience. It's considered but, even you know, just right, a real drift on the stick, isn't <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like straight, 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 straight. Now we're going right now. <laughs> so, See, I wasn't kidding you. Yeah, so yeah. Just praising the Lexus LFA's handling and like, yeah. these dev controllers, the they, they the see a lot of wear. Yeah, this has definitely been uh, borrowed from QA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely <laughs> lost a few Eliminator matches. Gripping by a very the small margin. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, it's 
you know, this, this, even to this day, this is regarded as one of the greatest cars ever built. I think it's one of Jeremy Clarkson's favorite cars mm. still. Mm. And he's a man that gets to drive every amazing car. And they've said they don't want to build another one, or at least not in the near future. Yeah. So its status is very much like yeah. cemented in car culture and, and history. Yeah. I'd, I'd argue they, they don't need to either. Exactly. It still they looks so fresh yeah. as well, considering how old the design is. I, I think the, I can't remember exactly, you have to forgive me, but the, the project started in about 2000. Yeah. Wow. And wow. like so, that's now a 20-year-old design, effectively. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look it. Does in it? fact, no. um, they actually they had a full working prototype, but it was before carbon fiber was still uh, was was something that was, was like actually usable. Yeah. yeah, and then once that became something that you, they could actually manufacture, they they pretty much binned off the whole pro project to go back to something that was mainly carbon fiber construction. Oh, wow. So that's that's the kind of time scale they they just kept going until what it was what they deemed to be perfect and. I think I think they managed it. It's it's yeah. a timeless car as well because they didn't go for the high performance numbers. They tried to make something that's so amazing to drive. So it's what's called lift neutral. Um, it doesn't make downforce. It doesn't make um, any lift. It's actually a very hard thing to do aerodynamically. But what it means is the grip you have is all about its mechanical grip. Um, so it makes it incredibly easy to read and, and drive. So, yeah, it's a car that I don't think we'll see many like it ever again. So like different from the rest of the portfolio as well yeah. uh, for Lexus and, and Toyota. Yeah, so thank you Toyota for yeah, letting us have yeah. it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really for a while, didn't it? It really like, just raised the cool factor of the entire Lexus range. Yeah. Because like, you couldn't afford or even get, if you could afford it, an LFA. But it makes you look at the, the, the badge with uh, yeah. a bit more of a cool factor. And even yeah, to this absolutely. day, you can still see that kind of ethos still lingering in, in Lexus is that the IS, I, I, ISF is one of the last normally aspirated V8 cars going. Um, whenever yeah. all its competitors have now gone forced induction, they've kept with that high revving V8. Uh, yeah, this did a lot of uh, development work at the Nürburgring as well. And it was always really cool to watch them developing that. It sort of brought that to the attention of a lot of people yeah. that all these manufacturers were developing all these amazing cars on that amazing circuit. They did a Nürburgring special they did, edition, yeah. though, didn't they? It was a very interesting shade of orange, yeah. which I probably wouldn't buy my LFA in. Especially I, I, I love it in the white, or the blue, the, the kind of deep metallic blue it comes yeah. in. I love the triple tailpipe. Oh, yeah. you, had a, you had an interesting one on that earlier, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, you? yeah. I, I read today that um, apparently the exhaust is stored within a transmission tube on the car. So rather than sort of finding the available gaps and running to the back of the car, it, it follows the transmission down down this tube in the centre. So I guess that might explain why it has those central three exits. So it looks great. It does, and I imagine that contributes to the sound as well. Of a, mm. yeah. a really interesting, okay, unique okay. V10. And players can get this in summer for completing 50% of the festival playlist. So that will be available from I guess, I guess this Thursday. That's right. So as soon as the season changes, you'll be able to get your hands on this. Um, we've got a couple more things to look at. Um, first of all is the uh, the new cars being added to Eliminator. Um, uh, yes. Max, do you want to talk to us about those? Yeah, so uh, in the last update we added the Horizon Heavyweights, uh, a, a bunch of cars that were all themed around being uh, big and large. This time around they are the Patrol and Pursuit pack, that's what we call the theme. So it's a, I'm not going to read them out from a list this time, you guys can uh, explore and, and see what we've added for yourselves, but there are uh, a selection of cars that are all uh, specialized for um, giving pursuit to other cars basically so they've all got patrol lights on them some of them have got more extensive upgrades as well uh, so we've got things like the Hillman Imp in there at the bottom at the end of the spectrum and the Jaguar Mark II 3.8 litre with the police lights and the classic siren on there and then in the middle we've got say the Crown Victoria uh, which I'm pleased to report has working police lights and the uh, Chevrolet Impala, and then right at the top, uh, we've got the Bugatti Veyron with, uh, with the uh, pursuit lights on there as well. So your opponents will know that you mean business when they see you in, your, in their rear view mirrors with the, with the lights flashing as you're <laughs> chasing them down. Going. Exactly. So um, yeah, this should be a nice uh, new addition to the Eliminator mode. Amazing. And I can see that we've chosen to use a picture of the Crown Vic that doesn't have the lights on. Uh, yeah, that's per unfortunate per there. Perfectly <laughs> demonstrating uh, <laughs> your, your point. Uh, I can promise you they do work now. Yes, okay, so I know, I know that's been a, a thing that people are asking for a lot. So that's the work in Eliminator <laughs> and across the rest of the game. That's right, yeah. Great. 
Um, okay, so we just have a few minutes left. I am just going to run through the other updates and fixes. I'm going to have to forgive me while I read them. So we fixed a couple of the uh, Eliminator achievements, that is Heads Up and Pacifist. For some players, they weren't unlocking. Uh, you will need to re-meet the criteria in order to get them to unlock though, unfortunately. Uh, we've fixed an issue where player houses would disappear after having been unlocked and purchased. That sounds pretty bad, so good job we fixed that. Uh, and fixed the issue where the first line of a subtitle would display again if multiple lines of dialogue were being played, presumably introduced with the new subtitles. So um, that one should be sorted now. Um, fixed an issue where players using metric uh, were unable to get three stars on a chapter in the British Racing Green story. <laughs> how, how, how do these things happen? <laughs> there you go. Um, <coughs> and there's a there's new UI in the Eliminator as well. So when you're in a head-to-head, -head, you can see what level your current car is. Um, that'll just give you a bit of a strategic advantage before you've got to make that quick decision once you've won a head-to-head. -head. Along with that, there's various stability improvements and other, other little things like that. So uh, I think that's just about all we've got time for. Um, so. Don't go anywhere. Uh, the Forza Monthly is coming up right after this. Uh, John Knowles is there, and he's going to talk to you guys about all loads more of these updates that are coming in the Series 19 uh, update, which goes live Tuesday. Tuesday, some some point before Thursday. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, all right, thanks very much. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, I've been Mike Brown. He's been Matt Pickering. That's Chris Phillips, Andy Baranowski. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> See ya.